not believe I'm doing this. But I sort of have to book a last minute hotel, all of that to go get an M2 MacBook Pro. Yeah. I am finally going to go to the Apple store, pick it up, and I just ordered it. <sighs> Two hour drive for this, but it has to get done. And today is like a 12 hour work day, but it has to get done for tomorrow. The M2 MacBook Pro. I know it's not the favorite, but John and I drove 150 kilometers to go get one, mainly because all of our Apple stores are closed due to a provincial holiday. However, it didn't change the fact that we really wanted to get one at lunch date. We wanted to unbox it, give you guys our first impressions, and compare it to the old M1 MacBook Pro. I think in short, that's what we're going to be doing today, right after I drive back 150 kilometers. Yeah, going to Ottawa back and forth for a laptop is not practical. but Look, we eventually got back to the office and unboxed this thing. My first impression of the box, it's very similar to all the other boxes Apple has been making. Of course, like with every release, the wallpapers on each model change. We still have the same paper seal to open up the box. However, I'm impressed that unlike the Mac Studio, Apple did not seem to stick to their paperless unboxing. I actually quite like that concept. However, in sight, they very much kept their MacBook wrapped in this environmental friendly paper. It's actually very easy to take apart and slide the MacBook out. By the way, my first impression of this chassis, it's very similar to their M1 model. Off the bat, it's very hard to tell the difference from the outside. I mean, looking at it all around, it doesn't really tell me that this is a brand new computer. Further in the box, there is a USB-C to USB-C cable. It's almost like a miracle. I'm waiting for the day they remove these out of the box. There's also the usual made in California packet. We still get some stickers matching your current color and some paperwork that no one ever reads. Finally, underneath a 67 watt adapter, very standard, just like their old model, my MacBook Pro 14 inch and their M1 MacBook Air. Super simple packaging, enough to get you to set up things right away. Opening up the lid on Fresh Macs, like always, we get their auto boot feature out of the box. Oh, and if you really hate this feature, sadly, you can't disable it. Trust me, I've tried and I've gotten nothing done. Note that this command is only functional for non M1 Macs. However, I do recommend you take some time and set up the basics to play with your new MacBook a bit. I personally have a time machine to accelerate my process, but once I'm in, on my end, I usually like to replace my wallpapers with something I like. Then I make sure I am on the latest stable mac os and always uncheck the automatically keep my mac up to date box don't be a guinea pig i then remove the unwanted apps on the dock completely and try to make things look minimal i like adjusting the size of the dock and tweaking the magnification to have a smooth effect when i hover over my apps also make sure that within the same dock and menu bar settings page you scroll all the way down and you enable your battery percentage trust me it's really nice not having to hover over your battery indicator to view your battery life also always use the stack your files feature on the desktop to avoid having a messy wallpaper this makes the same type of files stack up and cleans things up and uh, i recommend enabling your firewall to protect you a bit from malware at last don't be that person use dark mode so you avoid ruining your eyes even more as for me it all starts with chrome and making this my default browser however like i said i made a time machine backup just to make sure i could back up my files and apps for my macs i use all kinds of productivity apps whether that's coding writing cleaning and designing iStat menu is a great example of one it allows me to use an advanced mac system monitor for my menu bar and even one switch which is a little menu bar app that gives easy access to a bunch of handy features my favorite one though is slidepad because it quickly allows me to access the most used apps the coolest part is that those apps are all part of setup and that's why i wanted them to sponsor this video with one sign up to their platform
platform, you have access to over 230 apps. Within Setup, you can define the task and the app itself will make sure to deliver you a solution. They have a dashboard where they present you with recommended apps based on your max activity and also deliver new arrivals which they keep constantly adding. After your weekly trial, with one fee per month, you have access to hundreds of apps that cost money within the App Store. And so this can make your brand new MacBook a lot easier to set up based on what you do within your everyday life. Just imagine searching for a specific task, finding the right app and installing it with one single click. With more and more premium apps and features being added on a regular basis, Setup can really help you be at the top of your productivity game. Try it for free for 7 days today by clicking the link in the description down below. After going through the whole setup and spending some time with this new MacBook, I can definitely give you guys a bit of my first impressions. This here is the cheapest pro computer you can currently get, although it's definitely not a computer for those who come already from the M1 MacBook Pros, mainly because honestly, physically, they are identical. We don't really get the new redesign they provided us with the MacBook Pro 14 inch. The chassis, it's still the same. We get rounded corners, chamfered edges, and the hinges still feel the same when opening the lid. Inside, they can kept the speaker placement next to the keyboard, delivering pretty much the same sound. And note that this year, we still get the same Magic Keyboard as last year, with the same Touch ID fingerprint sensor. On top, awkwardly enough, we still get the same infamous touch bar. I personally don't mind it, but it would have been nice from Apple spending the money on a notch screen instead of this. That's right, the screen is 13.3 inches instead of 13.6 inches like the new MacBook Air. We get chunky bezels, no notch, and we still get a 720p camera. I know it's not the best, but I can definitely confirm with you guys that these new mics sound way better than the ones on the M1 MacBook Pro. Anyways, overall, display-wise, nothing has changed. We still get the same Retina display delivering 2560 by 1600 pixels with 500 nits of brightness, a P3 white color gamut, and true tone technology. And interestingly enough, even though the M2 chip is bigger and can back up more RAM, the new M2 MacBook Pro still weighs the same 3 pounds as its predecessor. I will say though, it's nice that the new input jack supports advanced support for high impedance headphones and so with these sound upgrades, we also get to benefit from spatial audio which has dynamic head tracking when using AirPods. Other than that, sadly, we still get the same two Thunderbolt 4 ports, so no, you cannot connect two monitors at the same time. You would need a Setechi hub to make sure you can do so. However, having the same hardware features as the M1 is not always bad, mainly because there is nothing like the Apple Magic trackpad. And no, that's something I do not want Apple to change. Both the M1 and M2 models pack up the same big trackpad with the Force Touch feature that we all love and enjoy. Opening things up, Apple still wanted this M2 to perform even better at high temps compared to the Air, which is why we still get the same fan they delivered within the M1 chassis. M2 also doesn't really deliver a faster fingerprint sensor reader, by the way, but it does deliver bird of performance in a lot of the quick tests I performed today. Off the bat, Geekbench was the first base layer of numbers I wanted to acquire to see the theoretical difference. CPU benchmark numbers were quite different, especially in multi-core scores, and I also ran a GPU benchmark test for Metal and OpenCL within the M1 and M2, and the results were fairly different. Eventually, this made me wonder, what if I open a large Premiere profile within these two laptops? The M2 was able to open the file faster compared to the M1. This of course led me to test the scrolling responsiveness of the timeline, play my S-Log files from my A7S Mark III in full resolution, and color grade a few clips and add some text layers. And while Apple claims that their image processing performance is 39% faster than M1, I truly believe it. In fact, I ended up exporting our last video on both machines and the difference was about 10 minutes. Even editing pictures in Lightroom and opening them on Photoshop delivered a smoother experience off the bat. Not that M1 wasn't smooth at all, but this new M2 just shows how it overall is better. For me, this is the pinnacle of a machine for entry-level content creators and even iOS developers. I think a machine like this to develop heavy code sources that are graphic intensive can be really useful. I mean, Xcode was more responsive and even stress testing it with the Xcode benchmark, it sped out 
better numbers. I even ran a few sample apps on this MacBook and I very much enjoyed the extra performance this practically provides. And note that all of this is being done on a base model with an 8 core CPU, a 10 core GPU and with 8 gigabytes of RAM. However, in terms of memory speed, I did not notice a difference between this and the M1 Pro. Reading and writing to memory was surprisingly not the same. I'm honestly not sure if it has to do with the fact that the M1 MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Kinda odd. Look, the big picture here is that the M2 delivers 18% more performance at the same power consumption compared to M1, which means that with the same 20 hours of battery life, we get an 18% improvement. I would have loved to test the battery life more extensively, but all I can say is that from the moment we started filming at 3.30 p.m. to the moment we stopped filming at 8 p.m., we saw a drop of about 36% in terms of battery life, and keep in mind we were setting up the laptop, testing Premiere Pro footage, benchmarking it with Xcode and running other tests for this video, including the speedometer test which by the way performed really well compared to the M1, you'll definitely get a boost when it comes to web speed. Look, this here was an unboxing, a setup and a first impressions video. There's still so much to be said about this laptop including a comparison video between this and the MacBook Pro 14 inch. I literally got this today for you guys to quickly give you an overall sneak peek of what this laptop delivers. If you are thinking of upgrading your old system to the new MacBooks, let me know in the comments down below. I will leave you guys with that. I will see you all soon. Take care.